Welcome to Everyday Linux User and welcome to a month on KDE Neon. What do you get if you use a solid base distribution, a state-of-the-art desktop environment and a cleverly curated set of applications? You already know the answer because you are watching this video. KDE Neon takes the solid long-term support release of Ubuntu 2404 and adds in the latest KDE desktop and applications. It isn't Kubuntu. Kubuntu is basically Ubuntu with the KDE desktop, including snaps and everything that it has to offer. KDE Neon, however, has its own repositories, which houses the absolute latest version of the KDE desktop environment, and so every KDE app you install with it will be completely up to date. Now I have been using KDE Neon for the past month, and in this video I am going to tell you how it went. Let's start off with installation. It is about as straightforward as installing Linux can be. It uses the popular Calamari's installer, and all you have to do is follow simple instructions, such as choose your language, your keyboard layout, whether to install it alongside your current operating system or make it the only one. You set up a user, and that is pretty much it. Post-installation, setting up hardware is a doddle. The Ubuntu base sees to that. Wi-Fi is simply a case of choosing your network and entering the password. Setting up Bluetooth is just searching for the Bluetooth device and then clicking connect. And printing should be set up for you automatically, but if not, there is a straightforward interface. KDE Neon comes with a decent set of applications and it is easy to install other applications because flat packs, not snaps, are enabled by default. And KDE comes with the Discover tool, making it really easy to find what you are looking for. On the surface, KDE Neon is a Linux newcomer's dream as KDE is very easy to get used to with a simple menu, taskbar, quick launch icons and system tray. And for handling other settings, there is a really nice settings manager. Now, you probably thought that because I said on the surface that there was a big buck coming, but no, there isn't. I have used KDE for the entire month and I haven't had a single hiccup. It really does work and it works well. I'm really surprised that this distro isn't more popular. It is every bit as solid as Linux Mint, and KDE is no better or worse than Cinnamon. It performs better than Zorin and Ubuntu, because in my opinion, KDE performs better than Gnome. When we talk about performance, the nerds like to bring up stats, saying it uses this amount of memory, and the CPU spikes, and if you're playing games, you get this frame rate, etc. And in YouTube, you may see so many drop frames. I prefer to look at performance a different way, and that is, when I am using the computer, how does it actually respond? I don't need metrics for that. If I try and load KDE Discover and GNOME Software Manager, there is no comparison to be made because Discover not only loads much faster, it is far more responsive. If I am navigating the KDE desktop, it performs better. And that is because it isn't weighed down by so many overzealous animations and things that you don't really need. And any animations that are included by default, you can actually turn off as I showed in a previous video. And that makes KDE lighter and smoother. In theory, because KDE Neon uses the absolute latest KDE packages, you could expect it to be more buggy, but it really isn't. This is a great example of how Linux should be for the average, ordinary, everyday computer user. And that is the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. If you see something to do with hype, I don't know what it is either, but YouTube keep pushing it. Can you please give me some? Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.